In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between an ASP.NET website and an ASP.NET web application, and hopefully give you enough information to make a decision as to uh, which type of project you'd like to choose. So let's take a look at some code. Uh, first of all, let's take a look. I'll start off by creating a new web application. Create a new project. You notice that web application is found under the project, new project uh, selection. I'll go ahead and choose Visual C Sharp. I'll go ahead and choose web application. We're going to see demos. Notice that it goes into a location, C colon demos, and I'll choose web application. I need to give it a name. First web app. I do get to choose which framework I want to use. Notice that it creates my default.aspx just as expected. Default.aspx has an associated default CS file and a designer file with it as well. If I right click on my first web application project, I have the ability to add a new item. From here I can add a web form. I could just call this login.aspx and it will add a new page directly to the project for me. Let's close out of both of these. Now that we've got the first web app ready, let's go ahead and add a site. I can either right click on my solution or I can go to File, Add, New Website. Notice I'm not adding a new project, I'm adding a new website. I'm adding it to the current solution. And the only options that I have deal with web, uh, websites or web services. Again, I can choose my framework, .NET 3.5. We'll go ahead and go with Visual C Sharp. And notice that the location that I have, uh, I can either specify a file system, HTTP, or FTP. So I can go directly to an FTP site from here Notice again that I don't have to specify a location and the name of the project. That's because the folder, the final folder, will actually be the name of the website that gets created. So we'll go ahead and call this first web site. Click OK, and that adds my first website and adds my default.aspx with associated uh, CS file. Now, when I right click on my folder, I can choose Add New Item, and under Add New Item, they're going to be a little bit different. Of course, we still have our web form, but notice the default name is default to minor difference. But we'll go ahead and call this login.aspx. One difference here is instead of Visual C Sharp, I can actually choose Visual Basic as a language. So we'll click Add, and you'll notice that. My default.aspx has a C-sharp file, and my login.aspx has a VB file as the code behind it. If I tried to add a new item under my web application, notice there is no option to choose Visual Basic. The only option that I have is Visual C-sharp. Let's take a look at the difference between adding utility classes. So in my first web app, I'll go ahead and go to the application folder. I'll right click on the first web app and choose add new item. This time I want to add some code. The only thing I want to add is just a code file. We'll just call it utility.cs. We'll click add. Notice that it was added directly in the root directory of my web application, just where I placed it. I just add the code file. We'll just make it a class, public class. Public string say hello. Specify return hello. 
so there we've got our utility function that has a simple uh, our utility class and a simple function called say hello, and we'll just say hello to whatever string was passed in. It returns a string. Let's add that similar utility class in our website. I will right click on my website folder here, choose add an item, and I can't filter it by code type, so I'm just going to have to look for a class. I'll choose a class. Just for sake of consistency, we'll use C Sharp, and we'll call it Utility. Click Add. Notice a pop-up message that comes up. It says, you're attempting to add a special file type class to an ASP.NET website. The, the message here basically states that I won't be able to reference the code inside of this class unless it's in my app code folder. So it prompts me to actually place it in my app code folder and ask me if I want to continue. Yes, I do. It'll put it in my app code folder. It'll actually add the app code folder if it isn't already there. And it'll put it inside of there. It adds some additional references. Uh, puts utility.cs. Location, we'll just add. Oh, that is my constructor. I don't need to worry about the constructor. We'll just add a public string. Say hello. Return hello name. And there we've got my utility class that has a simple function, say hello, just like before. The main difference, as I noted, is that we've got this app code folder um, that's available in the website and we don't have such an app code folder inside of the first web application. To briefly explain why this happens, uh, you have to know a little bit about deployment. Again, when I compile an, a web application, all of the code pages associated with all of my pages get compiled and get placed into the bin folder. So everything is pre-compiled and gets put into the bin folder. That means every single class, including this utility.cs, gets compiled into one giant DLL depending on how big your application is, and gets stored in the bin folder. Because they're all in the same DLL, public methods are available one from another. In my website, notice that I have a C Sharp file and a VB file. Well, if I was using the same compiler to compile them all into one DLL, I wouldn't be able to have them be different languages. What happens is that each page and the code associated with it gets compiled into its own DLL at runtime, and because it's its own DLL and the login.aspx is its own DLL, I can't reference the code from one to the other. That also means that if I had my utility class at the root level, it would be just a floating DLL out there that I don't have a reference to from either of these pages. Therefore, uh, websites, a new app code folder is created, and all uh, code files get put inside of here, and that gets compiled into one DLL and automatically uh, ASP.NET automatically adds a reference to any code that's inside of this app code folder. Therefore, I do have now have access from my default.aspx and my login.aspx to access the code inside of here. That's pretty much it for this lesson. I will talk about deployment of both websites and web applications in other videos. Uh, so please watch for those videos, and thank you for coming to learn to code.net.